Here we are in MATLAB. If you haven't already downloaded the projectilevelocity.m file, please do so now from the link in the description. According to the last video's flowchart, we start by defining the given t vector and the piecewise components of v of t. Note the dot caret here because t is a vector. We don't need to use dot notation here because the 5 is a scalar. You can include the dot notation if you want. It won't mess up the code. I also created a variable called b, which is the time at which the projectile's velocity changes. This should be familiar from the last video. Next, we need to build v of t with the help of the built-in heaviside function. There's a lot to unpack here. Let's start with the v1 part. The first thing to note is the heavy side of t minus b. This means we shifted our step function to turn on at b equals 8. For example, let's say t equals 4. This graphic clearly shows that heavy side of 4 minus b equals 0, which should make sense since 4 comes before the switching point b. Let's confirm this numerically. But there's a problem. v1 needs to be on from 0 to b, but the heaviside function will return 0 for all times before b. This is where this 1 minus comes into play. The 1 minus essentially reverses what the heaviside of t minus b evaluates. We can see this graphically, and we can test this in the command window. So we're using the 1 minus heavy side to say v1 is on from 0 to b and off from b to 16. The v2 part is much more straightforward. Heavy side of t minus b equals 1 at and beyond b, so we just need to multiply it by v2 to signify it's on in that time range. Note that in both parts we use the dot multiply because both v's and the heavy side function are vectors. This implementation with the 1 minus heavy side can be confusing, so I'd like to show you an alternative. If we distribute the v1 to both terms in the parentheses, we get v equals v1 plus the quantity of v2 minus v1 times the heavy side of t minus b. This is a much more compact way of writing v of t. Actually, this formula applies for any two part piecewise continuous function. You have the first piece added to the difference of the pieces multiplied by the step function at the transition point. I'll code this in MATLAB. I call this v alt because we already defined v in the line above and I don't want to overwrite it. Don't forget the dot multiply here as well. Let's plug in some numbers. At t equals 4 seconds, h of t will evaluate to 0. This entire parenthetical will essentially become 0 and we're left with just v1. At t equals 9 seconds, heavy side of t minus b will evaluate to 1 so the v1 here and the v1 here cancel, and we're left with just v2, as expected. I want to do a quick check. Let's compute the absolute value of the error between v and v alt. We'll use this in a bit. For now, let's finish the code. Uncomment the plot commands and run the code.
The first thing to note is the use of subplots. A subplot is basically a matrix of plots all concentrated on one figure. After we open a new figure, we call the subplot command with three arguments. The first two arguments specify how many rows and columns we want the figure to have. The 2, 1 tells MATLAB to create a 2 by 1 matrix of plot windows. The third argument, the 1, tells MATLAB to plot everything on the first set of axes. MATLAB numbers subplots by row, so this will be the upper set of axes. I also use the SG title command to place an overall title on the figure instead of having to use the title command repeatedly. We can see that we plotted V and V alt on the upper subplot. It looks pretty similar to what we drew in the first video. This gives us confidence that our code is right. We can clearly see V1's parabolic trajectory up until t equals 8 seconds, at which point it switches to V2's linearly decreasing trajectory. Going back to the code, we call the subplot command again, but switch this last one to a 2. This says to plot everything afterwards on the second subplot or the lower subplot. I plotted the error over time. You can see it's essentially zero the whole time, which confirms that V and V alt are more or less identical. We can confirm that numerically. In this demo, I showed you two equivalent ways of expressing the same piecewise function using the heavy side step function. I encourage you to really process how the step function is used here. It'll be a focal point of the class in the differential equations unit, and you'll likely see it in your junior year. You should instinctively think of using step functions whenever you see a piecewise function from now on. This demo also included a brief blurb about subplots, which was hopefully review. See you soon.